So we've got our scene set up. We were just talking a little bit about rendering and um, thinking about having some lead time in and out of our animation. So there's some pause before action happens, action happens, and then there's some plenty of frames at the end. And this is a, a good way to set up for, um, uh, for thinking about compiling a lot of these things together uh, in terms of one final project. So I'm gonna set up my render settings and I'm gonna choose physical render. And then I've chosen, um, I was just talking about saving a path so I could definitely label this, right? I can choose a folder for this. I'm just gonna go to my 3D animation, create a new folder and call this ball bounce. Okay, I'm gonna create the folder and then I'm just gonna label it BB. That's gonna be the name of each file that you create and it's safe. Now for format, you know, in the previous animations that we've done, we've done some rendering. When we did the ball animation, we did a rendering to an MP4. That's the final output that we're gonna do. But for this, what I highly recommend is doing a image sequence. So I'm gonna choose PNG instead, right? Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna create 120 PNG files for you. Okay, and the reason why it's important to do this is for a few things. One is um, if you, if power goes out and you're in the middle of uh, rendering out an MP4 or an MOV, a movie file, you'll lose the whole file. The whole thing will be corrupt and it'll go away, right? It won't play. If you are rendering as PNGs, it's automatically saving each individual frame as you go. So the power goes out you have everything that you've rendered so far and you could pick up where you left off, right? And that's, you know, that's like worst case scenario, but also if you just need to stop, right? Sometimes you're rendering something and you have to do something else. Your computer gets, you know, messed up and you've got to stop it. So rendering out as an image sequence is much, much better. So let's see as an example of that. Do I have that in here? Giant worm. So here you can see I'm rendering out giant worm, right? And this is an image sequence. So it's just all these PNGs. And if I scroll through them one at a time, I've got the animation happening, right? The other thing is, about this is let's say, you know, there's a little quirk that happens in your animation. Like there's four frames that just have a little reflection that you don't like, right? You could take those four frames into Photoshop and just edit it out and still have your animation work accordingly, right? So it's good, an image sequence is more stable. Uh, it's easier to, to tweak tiny little things later on. And again, when you're rendering, if something happens, you can stop it and you can start off again. So for example, this was uh, 270 frames. Uh, I'm sorry, it was 360 frames. I stopped it at 275 and now I can start it back up at 276. I can pick that up where I left off and render out the rest of it. Okay, so I've got this sequence set up choosing PNG. Um, when you go to output, make sure that you do current frame, right? Oh, I'm sorry, not current frame, but all frames for your render, okay? Now, again, if I'm picking up where I left off, if I needed to, right, I could type in, an, I could type in 75, so then it would just render from frame 75 to 120, and I could keep, keep rendering for that. So all frames for this, and I'm ready to go. Render to the picture viewer, and it's just gonna go frame by frame by frame. It'll take a little bit of time uh, to do this. And this is where, you know, again, using the lab may be helpful if you have access to it. Uh, the other thing that I typically do at home if I'm rendering on my laptop or on one of my other machines is I'll just get it going at night before I, you know, before I go to sleep, I'll just start a render and then in the morning I can see what I have. Um, or, you know, go do take a walk, something like that. You can calculate the time of each frame as you go through this as well. So uh, they're gonna vary a little bit based on the action and the reflections and stuff that are in your scene, but overall you can calculate it out. So this one is taking a bit of time, 48 seconds. So you multiply 48 seconds by 120 you know, divide by 60, and that'll be how many minutes long you're gonna, your animation is gonna be, okay? Uh, while it's 
going while it's rendering, you can preview it as well. So for the giant worm one, if I click on this top one and I hit play, it's going to show me every single one that I've done so far, right? So that's cool. And then even if you have another one going, this will keep track until you close cinema, right? So this will build a long history of everything you've rendered. As long as you have cinema open, if you close it and restart it, all this stuff will go away in the picture viewer. But remember, it is saving it to another file, right? So now here I've got two frames and I can see, you know, nothing happened yet because they're just stills. Uh, but again, you can kind of click between these and see what's happening with the picture viewer. All right. So again, just a reminder, when we're rendering for this project, some lead time in and out. So you have some uh, edit space that you can use. And then also um, make sure you uh, render as a PNG sequence. That's ultimately what we're going to be doing for this.